Are you ready for some conferences, ladies and gentlemen? Warhammer conferences? Potential price hikes in Kill Team? I mean, who's surprised? And retcons for 30k. Gooly golly. This is just one of those weeks that ends with a Y and starts with a Y, so I guess no one should be surprised. But this week we are brought to yet another generous offering from Games Workshop of either sheer incompetence or some level of alien intelligence. I still say they're probably controlled by alien bathtub monsters, but let's not get into conspiracy theories. So we'll start off with probably the the most egregious of these topics, and that is the... Are you guys aware that in the Martian Civil War book, they have retconned when Mark 7, you know, the, the angry, the, the mean face, the Vox mask version of Space Marine armor, you know, the most famous one that's been around for 30 plus years, yeah, that one, uh... They retconned when that was actually obtained by the traitors in the Horse Heresy. Not only that, but they also retconned when Sigsman had the Black Sword. So we got a twofer. And I think this is for a very, imp a very particular marketing reason. Not the Black Sword. I just think that's stupidity on their part. Hey guys, what if he was just like swinging it around? Gribbity gobbly. I, I, I think they don't have much thought there, but I think the other part is they plan on discontinuing the Mark 7 kit so that they can eliminate people using any of the tactical kits for 40k armies because <laughs> we won't want two people to play two systems at the same time. Gosh, that would be wrong. And um, they're very clearly planning on bringing it over to um, the Horse Heresy. And I have actually a suspicion because I've seen several rumors talking about some a potential Horse Heresy Christmas box. Or at least the next Horse Heresy box uh, that they plan on putting out. And I'm starting to believe that the infantry that's going to be in that box are going to be Mark 7. And this justifies it on being on both sides. So they don't have to include two separate kits, everybody. Everybody's in Mark 7. So that's my conspiracy fury there, wink a wink, and uh, we'll move on over to Kill Team. So Kill Team is getting a new edition because reasons. Uh, mostly of those reasons all involve dollar bill and cash signs. So you know reasons, and uh, we're getting uh, some new boxes being re-released to some of the old teams. I think this is the part where they're cashing these in before they decide to stop supporting them. And I notice that they're all being shown with these data cards. So I'm assuming uh, they're implying they're a double, but I don't think the data... No, the data cards don't come with it. But, wow. You kind of need those cards from the implications to run your teams because it has the rules for them. So fun times there but I know there's going to be an increase in the box not because of the cards because that's separate air quote but because they're going to be including the tokens needed for each of those teams to play and we all know Games Workshop really loves to charge even more money when it involves something that's paper and cardboard holy cow we thought they were overcharging for plastic so I'm expecting a bit of a, uh, a bump in the individual box prices. I think they're trying to get them to be around $80 a box effectively. Or at least that's kind of their goal for them at the moment. And it's a bit ridiculous there. But Kill Team is, I think, going to be uh, entering its last legs and mostly turning into a tournament thing. Because it's really not well new player friendly anymore and it really wants you to buy set boxes and not really make your own things and lord forbid that you buy some old tacticals and use them in a squad because we got rid of that rule because lord forbid in every universe because zinch couldn't take it that you not spend obscene amounts of money on something for a change but you know there there's 
kill team kill team's gonna get more expensive like everything warhammer related and the only nice thing i can say is the boxes look really nice whoever's doing the uh the visual design on them uh they get one thumbs up not two because they're probably gonna charge you for the box redesign too so there you go and last but not least have you guys heard that there's going to be a conference a warhammer conference now i'm going to not be doom and gloom it's i looked for some of the stuff that's been announced in it and it's not all bad some of it's interesting but and i do mean but it is being hosted in germany and as someone who lived in germany not entering my trust level right there and it's being hosted on the university so again my trust level <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding of course but the main thing is what concerns me is what we saw happen with uh, the Tolkien group uh, that similar that that hosted uh, it's the Tolkien Foundation I think's the name I might be getting that name wrong but they host a conference and it's been a bit infiltrated by um, politically minded people who really, really want to uh, tell you how gay uh, the hobbits are kind of thing. It really, really seem to be obsessed with telling you about how gay the hobbits are instead of having any meaningful conversation. So I'm concerned that a Warhammer con a conference... Eh, will kind of go down that same road not to mention is anyone excited about a warhammer conference headlined by a bunch of people that are gonna have weird intellectual paper styled names for their things of like how space in warhammer 40k taught me that dogs aren't real and wallpaper paste is the one way to truly mortality D do you really want to read that do you really want is, is that going to get you to buy a ticket and go on over to German land and sit through a conference that the, probably the highlight of it between the, you know, attempts to hang yourself if your own tie is the lunch breaks. Uh, some of it's going to be interesting, I'm sure, but I just don't understand the point of it. And I'm very, very suspicious of it in the long term. I just feel like it's going to be a way for more people who don't actually like the hobby to get involved in it and push their ideas. And I just don't like that. Not that I don't like newer people being involved in the hobby. I just don't like people who hate the hobby being involved in the hobby. You know, because I'm not stupid. And, uh, you know... I like my hobby to not be destroyed, but you know, you know, let me know how you feel about it. And since I have actually had request, I will actually be producing a video that talks about how I would handle um, putting the pieces back for 40k effectively in a way that would try to not destroy people's collections while going back into a more traditional form for Warhammer 40k and how that would be done and if people really want I might actually do a thing about how I would incorporate certain elements of the Primaris and what things would get left at the doorstop because let's face it some of the things they made for the Primaris are really really stupid as ideas like yeah, we're not replacing, like, your unit because this guy's got, like, jump packs and he has a moon helmet and he, like, dual wields heavy boulders, brah. And it's just a dumb unit. <laughs> so, yeah, there would be some things, but I will be uh, uh, tackling that topic. I'm sure people will love my fixing Warhammer. And I'll put that one Eons of Battle guy on there so we can make sure it's an extra fix-it video. Because he does fixing it of everything. Even though I don't think he does a very good job at fixing it. Not that I dislike him. I just don't like his fix-it videos. But hey, let me know what you guys think of any of these topics. Because I, I really want to know who actually is excited about some of this stuff. Or how you feel. Because am I the only person that 
thinks a lot of this is stupid and unnecessary, let me know in the comments. Or, you know, tell me I'm stupid. Whichever you feel like. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.